I have no idea how this happened, okay? And I know I'm, I'm an old guy and I know that this is creepy and weird. I, I'm at a loss for words. We're expecting. I, I'm, I'm stunned. Don't go away. So yeah, we're expecting. I, I don't. I can't even believe that this day has happened. We're expecting the delivery of my glow forge. It seems like it's been years, but it's finally coming today. I I got this shipping notice from Glow Forge. I've tracked it with UPS. It says it should be here today. I've gone to to great lengths to get notifications from UPS and everything like that. And it's finally here. I can't believe it. I'm stunned out of my mind. Okay, listen, I'm gonna be honest with you. You've seen the video with the, the Ikea hack table and you've seen the video with me buying the Glowforge and I, I told you how stressful that was. It doesn't hold a candle to the weight, okay? So, I mean, this has just literally been unbearable. So, when I started really thinking I was going to go with the Glowforge, because I, I looked for a long, 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 long time, and I even looked at the, the Chinese knockoff lasers and all that, and I, I, and I finally kind of landed that I wanted a Glowforge. And so when I was looking at it, it was saying eight-week shipping times, and I was like, oh, man, that sounds horrible. So, um, we finally settled on it. I went in to buy, and the estimated shipping had dropped to, to four weeks. So I was happy about that. Well, I wasn't happy about it. I mean, I wasn't happy about having to wait for the darn thing. But I was happy that it wasn't eight weeks. So, we clicked order, and time was going by, and we were getting all these notices, which I'll share with you here in a, in a little bit, so you can see how that all works. But um, then I got a notice that it was going to slip a week. So it was going to be five weeks. It ended up actually slipping more like two weeks. So it's been like six weeks. And it's been just unbearable. It really has. This is the worst part of buying the machine. And, no, no, no listen. Okay, that's just because I'm hyperactive and I couldn't wait to get it. But there is a practical side to the weight if you're buying this to use it as like an investment where you want to start a business and stuff like that, um, you're shelling out the money for this machine and not getting any return on that money for that whole six week window. Okay, so that is something you need to take into consideration when you buy your machine. Um, it's something you probably want to buy earlier than you think you need to just so it will get here when you really want it. Um, and that doesn't mean you have to sit around like a bump on a log and do nothing. So I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I've been doing today to keep busy and get ready for our new arrival. Okay, so just because you're stuck waiting for your glow forts doesn't mean you have to just sit around and do nothing. Be productive, okay? That way when your machine gets here, you'll be ahead of the game, okay? There's so many things you can do. And I'm just gonna show you some of the things that I've been doing to be prepared for our new arrival. Um, you saw me build the assembly table here, okay? And I love this thing. This could be used for a lot of different things. Who knows, I might make more of them. But what I'm doing today is I went back and I got another Linmon top and some Adil's legs from Ikea. And I'm just building a little assembly table, a table that I can use to put heat transfers and I can spread them out on the tabletop for doing uh, t-shirts or while I'm doing laser cutting I can put my material up here or bring the cut pieces and set them out on a nice safe secure surface so this you know will match up nicely with this and you know that's what we're gonna do so um, I'll talk about some of the other uh, things that you need to be thinking about while we put this together so let's go ahead and get my little work table going here. 
Okay. Now there's there's all sorts of ways you can do a work table. IKEA actually had another table that I really eyeballed, but compared to um, the price of this, which was like uh, like I said under thirty dollars, um, they had this other cart. Really nice. I really thought about it a lot. And it's a, a metal rolling cart with a solid wood top on it. And so it's got the solid wood top. It rolls. Then below that, about this far down, there's a shelf. Then it goes down to just above the wheels. And there's another shelf. And uh, it looked like a really great uh, work table. And so I thought about that. But I ended up going with this because, you know, hey, I can always get that later. And this will never be a problem. So, um... So anyhow, like I said, I'm just going to put this together. Now, I have been busy other than just doing tables waiting for my Glowforge to get here. What can you be doing? Well, you can pick where you're going to set your machine up first and foremost, okay? Um, I'm putting mine out here in the garage, and I hope that will work out. This is Las Vegas, and it is hotter than all craziness. And uh, and I do worry that the machine might have a hard time out here. Now, the Pro has better cooling, and I'm going to get a fan for it, and we'll only use it first thing in the mornings, um, because frankly, I don't want to be out here when it's that hot. So, we'll, we'll be doing that, but... It's important that you're going to have your place figured out for your machine. So that's one thing we've got to take care of. All right. And then um, I wish I had brought my drill down, but I didn't. So I'm going to... Oh, let's see here. That's the wrong direction. There we go. That's better. Um, but yeah, you need to figure out where you're going to put your machine. Are you going to need venting? Okay. If this is in your house, you're going to have to vent it somehow. Uh, you can use just a static vent tube that the kit comes with, or you can uh, uh, add in a fan and put an inline fan with it. You know, it's your choice. Uh, but you're going to have to vent it if it's in your house, because this it is, it's burning things, okay? That's what it's doing. It's burning stuff. So it's going to make smoke. And, and that's one of the reasons... They're very uh, fussy about the products that you put in here. Uh, for instance, some plastics are an absolute bozo no-no in that when they burn, they will release phosgene gas and just really just kill you. And that's no good for anybody. And then you waited for a Glowforge all this time just to die. So definitely don't want to do that. So you, you need to be thinking, where is this going to go, okay? You need to have all that planned out. That's something you can do. You can start to watch YouTube videos like, oh, this one. Learn what other people are doing. I'm going to make all sorts of mistakes for you because I'm kind of an idiot. And so, you know, hey, watch me. See what I do wrong. Learn from it. My pain will serve to benefit you. So you can do that. What are you going to need to put the Glowforge where you want to put it? Are you going to want a table like this or a table like this? Do you have stuff? You know, what is your plan? Have a plan. Get it all worked out in your head, you know? So you can do that. Here's a big one. Here's a big one. Start getting files, SVGs, okay? That's what you really need. You need SVGs. And you can get these online. Start getting files of some of the Glowforge tools you're going to need. There are files for little pins to help hold your media down in case it's got a little bow to it. This will help keep it flat so it'll cut properly. Um, there are height adjustment boxes to, to get your part the right distance away from the, uh, the laser head. Um, there's just a ton of things out there. And then there's project SVGs. There's some great projects out there. And, you know, you can buy these SVGs from folks, edit them to suit your needs, 
and instantly you have products. Maybe start to learn uh, Inkscape or Illustrator. I've been using Illustrator for oh, 30 years now, so I kind of have a grasp on it, but maybe you haven't. Now's a good time to learn while you're waiting for this thing to get here, okay? So there's a lot of stuff you can do to be ready. So as an embarrassing truth here, um, frankly, I had done some coin ring video stuff and the garage was a disaster. So I came out yesterday and I straightened everything up so that, you know, I'd be ready for my Glowforge. Um, there are things that you can and should pre-order and I'll show you those here just in a second. So you see how easy it is to put this little Linmon table together. All I gotta do is screw four of these on, tighten up the leg, and we're in business. So, as an aside, okay, not really part of what we're talking about here. Can you hear? Listen. You hear it? Love it. I love the birds chirping. It's such a beautiful day here. Um, we have already eclipsed 100 here. And 100 is nothing to us, okay? That's, that's a, a walk in the park, Kazansky. So 100 really is nothing. But we've already eclipsed it. And yet today is glorious. Right now it's uh, 830 and it's only 75 degrees out. It is absolutely spectacular out right now. So this is just something else right here that, that you can be doing while you're waiting for your glow for it. A nice little project out in the garage, enjoying the beautiful weather. You know, this is the way to do things, okay? Don't stress out about it and wait till the last second. Get stuff done, you know? Uh, all right, so let's get these other legs on. And I want to show you, while I'm doing this, I'm going to show you my laser glasses, okay? I'm going to show you some of the other things that I'm doing here, but I want to show you my laser glasses first. So just give me one second, get this uh, last screw started, and then I'll, I'll get the laser glasses and show them to you. You want, you want to see me in them? Because I look like an idiot. So here, let me go get those. Come away. I'll keep talking so you know I didn't just bail out on you, all right? There, there are my laser glasses. That didn't work. They were supposed to slide really cool fashioned over into the shot, they didn't, okay? So these are glasses that I got on Amazon. They're made specifically for the CO2 lasers that are in a Glowforge. Uh, well, you know, it's not like they make them just for a Glowforge, but they're made uh, to handle that particular type of laser. And these are made so you can wear them over your glasses, which is a handy thing. And so now my eyes are protected from any stray beams of the Glowforge's laser. Um, so anyhow, uh, you need these, okay? Get these in advance, okay? Because you are you could cut without them at your own risk, okay? And, and don't be foolhardy with this thing, okay? This is this is a laser, a freaking laser, okay? The only thing missing is the sharks, all right? So this is a laser. It's kind of a toy, okay? I can't lie about that. It's kind of a toy, at least for me it is. But um, at the same time, it is a very dangerous toy and you need to use this responsibly. For example, don't go ahead and bail out of your house while your laser is cutting a big project thinking, I got time, I'm gonna run up to the store and go get this thing and by the time I get back, it'll all be done. Okay, you're gonna come back, your house is gonna be burnt down, all right? Not cool. Not cool at all. See, I really wish I had brought down my uh, uh, 
my drill driver. It's upstairs. I, I, I have a drill driver and two cordless drills all upstairs. You'd think I would leave at least one down here, but no. We can't do anything the easy way. Okay, so let's take these off, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get these legs on the rest of the way, and when I'm about done, I'll come back because I have so much more to show you. All right, I know you don't want to just sit there watching me screw these screws in all morning, okay? So we'll be back for you in a matter of seconds. So I was going to come back and tell you some big old lie about how I've been slaving away here, putting all these screws in my hand. <laughs> I went and got my driver because this is taking too long, and I didn't want it to take too long. Watch how easy this goes. By the way, that's not the bit slipping. This is an impact driver. So when it gets too much pressure on it, it will start to thump to make sure it's driving the screw all the way in. Um, so anyhow, that's what that is. But look how fast. <laughs> this is the way to go, guys. Okay, so I apologize for the noise. It seems like anytime I film outside or anywhere like this, the yard guys are here. So somebody's got the yard guys over there. Okay, so our work table is done and I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So let's go ahead and get this put where it goes. Okay, so I had the cart for the uh, Glowforge over here on this side like this. Okay, it was sitting right about here. I decided I'm gonna put that over here. I'm gonna put this assembly table here. That way, if I'm using the heat press, Okay, I got the heat press here. I got a table I can work with right next to it. Glowforge right here, table right here, okay? So that way I don't have to keep moving stuff around all the time. So now we'll get the Glowforge table. Roll that back into place. This thing is so great. Oh, look at that, the height's just really, really good there, okay? So as a firefighter, you know I was going to have to talk about this because we are burning stuff with our laser beam, okay? Um, look, this it can start a fire. It absolutely can start a fire. People have had their glow forges burn up because stuff was caught on fire. They were using the wrong material or whatever, and they weren't paying attention, and they've burnt up their glow forge. You need a good quality A, B, C dry chemical fire extinguisher, okay? You can get these at Walmart, Target, Amazon, wherever you wanna get one. But get one, make sure you periodically check the pressure gauge, make sure you periodically give it a shake to break loose any pack, uh, packed uh, chemical. And what I suggest is we have a little thing. On the 4th of July, you check your smoke detector batteries and you can also check your fire extinguisher, make sure it's all right. So I already had one for doing the coin ringing because I'm out here using a torch and chemicals and stuff like that, electricity things, things of that nature. So I've got another one. I might get a second one. Keep this one over there and keep one right here by the glow forge. So get yourself a smoke detector like I do. Again, it's something you can be doing while you're waiting for your glow forge to get here. Okay, so another thing that you can do is you can get in some supplies that you're going to want to be able to laser cut. Now, your Glowforge is going to come with $75 worth of what they call, I believe it's called the proof grade materials, and it's fabulous stuff, okay? It's high quality, it's pre-masked, it's uh, got these great QR codes on them, and the Glowforge will read the code and set itself up for that particular material. Fantastic stuff, but what I hear is that sometimes it can be difficult to get. Sometimes that stuff is sold out and you can't get what you want, blah, 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 blah. So I heard about a place called Smoky Hill Designs, and I ordered this. Let me show it to you. This stack of supplies for laser cutting. And this is a starter set 
um, or they call it a sample set. It was like, I want to say like about a hundred bucks and it's got a bunch of different material in here. I'm going to show it to you as we put it onto the cart. So let's do that now. Okay, so here's the stuff I got from Smoky Hill. This is a sheet of walnut and it's a, a quarter inch. Is it? Yeah, it's quarter inch. So this is quarter inch thick walnut, all right? Here is a piece of white birch, quarter inch. This is beautiful, huh? That's a beautiful piece of wood. That's sapele. I've never even heard of that. I'm a woodworker. It's quarter inch sapele. And this is a veneer product. So it looks. I don't think it's solid wood. Let me, let me see these others. Looks like they're all veneers. Okay. So... If you want solid wood, you'll have to do that separate. Okay, so that's the pele. What is this? This is maple, mahogany. If you watched my guitar video, you saw me use a lot of mahogany. It's got to be red oak. Red oak. This has got to be uh, the smelly stuff, cedar, aromatic cedar. This is just a piece of fiberboard. Okay, a lot of projects will be made out of that. Walnut, walnut. This is eight inch, okay. Red oak or just oak? White oak. Really beautiful figuring in it. Interesting. Mahogany, that's all the eight, eighth inch stuff here. Cherry, nice piece of cherry. I love cherry. Okay, this is acrylic. Here's a, a quarter inch thick piece of acrylic. Imagine what you can make with this. Look at that. That's not anything to sneeze at. This is heavy duty stuff, okay? And then here's a piece of eighth inch acrylic and, and that is no joke either. So my plan is to th do this. I'm gonna take, I don't have enough slots for everything. So this will be the, uh, I guess this will be the acrylic show. Quarter inch, eighth inch. All right. I'm gonna to have to get myself like a, a cutoff basket or something like that. Okay. This is uh, eighth inch woods. I want to show you something. Can you see the bow in that? Okay. I don't know how the proof grade stuff will be, but this has a bow in it, and that's why you're gonna to need to make yourself some clips when you get it, so that that will go away. So this is gonna go uh, right here. All right. This is all quarter inch. Okay. And what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna take the fiberboard and give it its own shelf. Okay. So this is wood, plexi, um, Oh, here, look at this. So I got these at Ikea. These are some cutting boards for uh, laser edging. Okay, so we got those, and I'm gonna actually move those to the bottom shelf. All right, like so. And then put that over here, along with its friends. And then, this actually will now go on this shelf. So we've got the, the acrylics, the quarter inch woods, eighth inch woods, and the fiber boards and stuff. And then right now, unless I change my mind, this is gonna be for things like this, like our little template that we use to make this table, and anything else that I wanna put on there. It's here! It's here!
Are you as excited as I am? Because I'm ready to pop. This is, what's her name? Ronnie. Ronnie? No, Ronnie. 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 This is Ronnie, my UPS driver, who is bringing our fabulous glow forts to us. Hello, hello. What's your name? I'm Paul. Paul, nice Paul. to meet you, Paul. Yeah, for my channel, Fat Guy Productions. I do hobbies and stuff like that. Oh, so, so thank you so much, no Ronnie. Have a good you have a great day. Okay. So there it is. It's actually here and in the house. I can tell Judy right now it's not a scam because it's here. All right. So let's go on inside and take a look. Okay. Here it is. So what we got is we got this big massive box here, and then over here I've got the, the parts box. So, you know, we're all set. And I bet you're saying to yourself, well, Paul, why are you in the house with your Glowforge and not in the garage? Well, it's, it's not even noon yet. And uh, I had gotten an email from Glowforge that had the instruction manual. And it says you shouldn't operate it in temperatures outside of 60 and 80 degrees. In the summer here, it is never, ambient temperature is never below 80, okay? It's 90, 95, even 100 sometimes first thing in the morning. So that was going to cause problems. So we made a last minute decision. The area behind me used to be a formal dining room and living room, and we walled it off, and we made it like a little studio apartment. So over there we have a bedroom, over here we have like a little living room. And so we immediately just moved the table for it in here, and we're gonna set it up in there for the time being. It's right, faces right up against the window for the vent. Uh, so we have that going. Um, we have a couple other options that we're gonna explore. So it may get moved, but for the time being, it's now going to go into the living room area of the, the little studio that we have here. So uh, um, it's here, and we're not going to unbox it for you today. Um, we're just going to, you know, sign off. It's here, let you see what you get. So you get that big box, and then I don't know if you can see this one. This is the... Oh, but anyhow, this is the big accessory pack uh, so we got that and then this massive box and what we'll do is in the next video when we come back we're going to take this we're going to lay it out flat maybe right even out here do the unboxing get it set up on the table in there um, so that's going to be it for today Anyhow, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a giant thumbs up, click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss any of my Glow Forge adventure. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I'd love to have you along for the ride. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here and move this thing so I can close the door. Then I'll make the dogs happy. And, uh, you know, hey, excitement time at Fat Guy Productions. Okay, I'm going. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying, be good.